For several months now, the coronavirus is a public health emergency and a deep concern to us all. I recorded this episode last week, just before the virus also started to disrupt our lives in Europe and in the US. Please take good care of each other, and wherever you're from and wherever you're watching, I hope that you're all safe. Hi, and welcome back to Bold Books and Bones. In a couple of minutes, I'm leaving for New York, and the reason for this trip is, of course, books. But more specifically, this kind of books. This is a 1945 edition of the famous book The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. It is a kind of book that changes people's lives. And I'm happy that I found this unique version of the book in an antiquarian bookstore in Brussels. This is the same book in a 2019 edition. And of course, it still has its dust jacket. Now I'm looking for other older editions of books and the best way to find them is by going on a book hunt. Now what is a book hunt? It's very simple. You go to a city and you visit bookstores that offer rare and used books. And you hope that you find what you're looking for. Chances are that you do not find what you need, but most of the time you will come across other beautiful treasures. So let's go book hunting in New York and you will see it's a different way of visiting a city. New York is of course synonymous with books. It has about 90 bookstores and there are many famous writers that were born, who lived or worked in New York. The bookstores are under pressure. Rising rents, new reading behavior and online bookstores are putting pressure on them and many have to close. In 1950 New York had 386 bookstores but a declining trend continues ever since. However, it is not only misery and doom. There are positive signs as well, and therefore I want to do three things in New York. I will meet with Dorian Thornley, owner of West Sider Books in Manhattan. The second thing that I planned is to watch the movie The Booksellers, that will be launched this weekend in New York. The third thing on my bucket list for this weekend is a visit to the 60th edition of the International Antiquarian Book Fair. I hope to find some cool books that I might want to buy. Well, it depends of course if I can afford them. The New York International Antiquarian Book Fair is held at the Armory, a beautiful historical building at Park Avenue. This building has been around since short after the Civil War and is now a place dedicated to experience art in different forms. And it is, according to the New York Times, one of the key cultural institutions of New York. It is a truly international book fair, with booksellers from Germany, Austria, France, Holland, Denmark, from different places in the United States and of course from New York. Now, what is it about these rare books? Why would people be interested in it or even buy them? Well, of course, people have very different reasons for it, but here are my three reasons. The first reason is all about the book hunt. You go to the bookstores and book fairs where they are specialized in rare books and you look for that particular book that you're searching for. And it's all about the thrill of finding it finally. And yes, my book hunt was fruitful. I found an early copy of Khalil Gibran's book, The Prophet with dust jacket and all. And the price is $19,500. Why is it so pricey? Because it is signed by the author and he inscribed it. It says, this is for Eleanor Fish, who lives in the world of beautiful understanding. That is the reason why it is such a valuable copy. So the book hunt is one reason why you would go to these bookstores and book fairs uh, who are specialized in rare books. I know I did not buy that special edition of the book The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. I just couldn't afford it. But if you're interested in purchasing it, I'll leave a link below where you can find it.
A second reason why you would go to antiquarian bookstores and fairs is maybe because you want to buy a very special present for somebody who is dear to you. Or you have a book that is very close to your heart and you want to own a very unique copy of it. And finally, the third reason is maybe you just want to start your own nice book collection. Whatever your reason might be to look for rare books, I recommend going to the New York International Antiquarian Book Fair. I spent many hours here and I enjoyed the friendly and professional atmosphere and having the many little conversations with the booksellers. And through these conversations, I learned of course a lot of new things about books. And if you plan to buy a book or not, the fair is a place where you can see exceptionally beautiful books and books with important historical value, but also books about topics that you would not imagine that it once existed. Like this French medical book from 1822 called New Demonstrations on Childbirth. Here you see an engraving of such a demonstration. I bought two books at the fair, one for $100 and one for $125. Each book is about 200 years old and I was looking for them for a long time. So the book hunt was successful and I'm a happy man. At the New York Book Fair, I also met an interesting woman called Helen Chris. She does something that I think is a real need for many bookstores and for the antiquarian bookstores in particular. Helen's company is called Le Biblio and she makes websites for booksellers. She can help to communicate what to expect when potential customers plan to visit a bookstore and her design is beautifully elegant. If you are interested in contacting her, I'll leave a link in the notes. The second item on my book bucket list for this weekend was to be in New York for the launch of the movie The Booksellers. I wasn't sure what to expect, but here are my observations. The Booksellers is an insightful documentary about the rare book dealers in New York. The director D.W. Young tells this untold story in a compelling way and I think that everyone who loves books will definitely like it. I went to see the documentary in the Quad Cinema at 34 West 13th Street. I'm happy that the movie is shown in a cool place because that is where it belongs. The way they launched the movie was also nice. There were several shows each day and some of the shows had additional live Q&A sessions with different people that were featured in the movie. I went on Sunday and I joined the Q&A session with the director of the movie D.W. Young and Nicholas Lowry, who is the president and the principal auctioneer of Swan Galleries in New York City. The Q&A was a real treat. We received additional interesting information about the making of the movie, some insights of what happens at book auctions and about the evolution of the book industry. I briefly met with the very kind Judith Mizrachi, one of the film producers, and with D.W. Young, the director. We did a little photo shoot outside and Nicholas Lowry joined us. That is a gentleman in the middle and he described the movie as a love story to an industry. And that is, I think, a spot on description of what this movie certainly is. So go to the website and check out when the movie will be in movie theaters in your area. It is definitely worthwhile to see it. I was also lucky to meet this fine lady. She is of course Judith Lowry, one of the three famous sisters who run the bookstore Argosy, which is a real treasure house if you are looking for old and rare books or prints or maps. So check it out next time when you are on a book hunt in New York. The last item on my New York bucket list is a visit to a bookstore in Manhattan called the West Sider Rare and Used Books. I was there before and I like these kind of neighborhood bookstores because they are a part of a local community. Dorian Thornley, the owner of the store, was so kind to make some time for a little chat. So can you say test, test? Testing, testing. Testing, testing. <laughs> Mary had a little lamb. Lise was white as snow. What's that? It's just a nursery rhyme. 
Okay. The bookstore has been around in this neighborhood since 1970 or 71. It is the kind of bookstore that you don't want to miss when you are in the area. It is a good place for book hunters because there is always something to find that you want to bring home. And Dorian has a particular preference when it comes to books. My things for the 20th century literature, I just like the old uh, bindings and the old uh, covers. And, and I'm more into the, the way the book evokes a, an era than I am, but particularly by its scarcity. But that's just me, you know. The West Sider bookstore was also featured in several movies, including Fading Gigolo. That's actually a, a John Turturro movie. Ah, okay. But Woody Allen was in it. Oh, Woody Allen was in it. That was the way. We were in a movie called um, Wonderwall, and uh, they did a quick scene from uh, Can You Ever Forgive Me? Yeah, I saw that one. That was with uh, Melissa McCarthy, I think, and with yeah, uh, and Jane Curtin. And yeah. Yeah. So how, how does it work when um, a film director wants to use a bookstore for, for a movie? Uh, usually um, you'll get a call from um, a scout and then the scout will show up and have a look around. That's it. They like book out a wedge of time that they need and uh, that's it. I get a couple of days off. <laughs> you get a couple of days off? They take over your store then? Or? Yeah, they take over, yeah. yeah okay. And any good memories about it or from it or special memories? Uh, it's usually pretty... Uh, stressful because they tear everything apart okay they don't always get it back together it depends on the production you know the more the more uh upbeat the production company not upbeat upscale the production company they usually leave it in better shape so the the cheaper the production they usually the uh they leave it in more of a mess we've had a lot of student films a lot of small movies as well yeah it's it's a perfect backdrop for uh yeah uh, Although this bookstore is loved by many, and even famous directors like to use it in their movies, a short while ago there were some dark clouds above the store. So a, a couple of months ago your store was struggling financially, and then you, you, you were saved by a very generous community, I understood. Could you tell a bit the story, what happened? Um, yeah, we, were, uh, we had a really bad year, um, and we, were, we announced that we were going out of business and the West Side Rag, which is the local uh, community paper, uh, did a little segment in their paper saying that we were going out of business. And a guy, uh, a customer, uh, read it and decided to um, start a crowdfunding campaign. And um, it went really well, and it very quickly raised enough money to um, pay off the back rent and uh, help us uh, move forward and restock. Oh, wow. So that was it mainly people from the neighborhood who invested in it, it was or a lot of people from the neighborhood, but it was also also people from far, farther afield, all over the world, really. Wow. I think Uruguay, you know, all over the place. But yeah, a lot of people who were just uh, familiar with the store and have been coming here for years and didn't want to see us go out of business. Yeah. So yeah, it was very gratifying. It was amazing. Using crowdfunding was a clever move. It seems like a good example of how the digital world can support the analog world. And there is more good news about bookstores, according to Dorian. Yeah, well, it seems like the bookstores are coming back. I mean, I'd say the, the low point was probably uh, four or five years ago when there was just, I think, us and Barnes and & Noble left. And, uh, and then um, now we have a... We had a book culture which just closed. There was um, There's Books of Wonder on 84th Street. Uh... They have a second or third location right there. And then uh, there's a Shakespeare and Company that just reopened on 71st Street. So, uh, oh, and the Strand is uh, opening an annex here. So it seems like it got to the point where everyone was trying a Kindle or not, you know, not shopping in stores or shopping on Amazon and just kind of missed, missed the habit of browsing in a real bookstore. So it seems like it's swinging back the other way a little bit. So we'll just have to see what happens. Yeah. That's nice. So, better times ahead. I like this bookstore a lot, because next to having a good selection of books, to me a bookstore also needs to be a place where you feel welcome. Because people who work there are nice to you, and they are helpful in finding what you search for. At Westsider, I felt welcome right away. Rachel, the friendly and very helpful young lady who works here, and 
of course, Dorian, the owner of the store, are people that have a real passion for books and they create a kind of atmosphere that you look for when you go to such kind of bookstore. And if you go there, you will probably also meet the cat. His name is Pig. Thanks, Dorian, for having me and I'm looking forward to visit your store next time when I'm in New York. A couple of hours later, I was heading back to Europe. Just in time before some days later, all flights were cancelled because of the coronavirus. It was a short but satisfying trip. The book hunt went well. This time I found what I hoped for. And of course I met a lot of nice and interesting people from whom I learned more about rare and used books and about the rare book industry. If you are planning a book hunt visit to New York in the coming month, then you can check out the notes underneath where you will find the links to all the bookstores and other places that were mentioned in this episode. Please take good care of each other and stay safe from the virus. And let's hope everything goes back to normal soon. If you liked this episode, then please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet and to hit that bell so you stay updated on what is happening next at Bold Books and Bones. See you in the next episode.